Okay, so I've been working mostly on the exterior, but I'm going to uh, come back to the interior now, and um, you can see there I've got my, uh, my layout starting to come together just using the areas that I've shown you previously, and I can, of course, uh, put walls and other things in there to uh, flesh out those, those spaces, which is going to be helpful, uh, particularly when we start to do some interior views. But I also need to now have some penetrations. Uh, I've got a, maybe a fire stair that I'll need uh, in this area, if, especially if I'm going to have these big void areas. And so it's very simple using the uh, shaft tool to do a penetration through multiple stories. Uh, back on the architecture tab in the opening section, obviously, you've got that shaft tool. And you can easily adjust the levels as you create it. And so there I'll make the base offset um, above, the sorry, above the ground floor so it doesn't cut through the floor on that level. Uh, this may end up going down to the car park, but for now I'm just going to do it from the ground floor uh, up. And then we can, of course, set a top constraint uh, to uh, maybe to my roof level, and then I'll have a top offset, uh, maybe just minus 500 or something, so it's definitely going to be below that roof. And so for now, I'll just draw a rectangle using the uh, area that I've established. Tick to finish, and you'll see... Once there's a section view there, can't see the section in this view, of course, but uh, in my uh, ground floor plan, you can see the section line there. And so quite clearly there, I've got a penetration running through all of those levels. And you'd need to have the walls usually... Um, well, actually, sorry, no, you don't. You can have the slab penetrating the walls. So you could do... You just need to check the fire rating and, and the way that you get to the connections, but you can have the, um, the slab edge go through your, um, your firewall uh, on the edge of your fire step. So I can have the, the wall sitting on the outside edge there. But we, of course, still need that penetration going all the way through those floors. Uh, and so this, the shaft tool is great when you need to uh, do things like fire stairs, and I'll do it again for my void in a moment, but the limitation is that it is uh, a straight shaft. If you want that to be a different shape, uh, then you can use one other technique, which I thought I'd just show you, which uh, can be useful for lots of other things as well. So if you make a, uh, just use model in place, and make a void, I'll just use generic models as my category, and I'll call it... Uh, Void shaft, maybe. And then you can use any solid shape. So I can make a blend, for example. Now you can go straight to void form and choose void blend. Or if you forget to do that and just make a regular solid using, say, again, blend. Just draw a rectangle for the... Uh, the bottom, and then go to edit top and draw a different size rectangle for the top, and then I'm going to set the height to, I don't know, 10 metres, 10,000, tick to finish, so that's obviously a solid shape, but I can still change that to avoid, remember, in properties. And that's often a good way to do modelling because once it's a void, it's harder to change that back to a solid and it's much easier to work on while it's a solid shape. Once it's a void, uh, it can be harder to see and, and harder to select and do other things. So I'll change it to a void now and you can see it's gone that orange colour which tells it's not, it's not cutting anything. Uh, so I'm going to go and... Uh, well, I'll just show you what happens. If I try to finish that now, it'll give me a warning telling me the void isn't cutting anything. But if I go into maybe my section view, just to make it easier to see, uh, and I might make that a bit taller as well. 
Okay, so using uh, cut, choose the void, and then any other system element is the limitation. You can't choose other families, so I can't choose these columns because they're a family. I can't choose the windows either because for those they expect you to make a void uh, that's part of that family. But anything that's a system family, like a floor or a wall, I can select. And so I can cut out from these floors here. Now the void's disappeared, and this is where it gets a bit tricky. So there's a trick to selecting it after it's cutting something. I'm going to finish the model, and then I'm just going to go and move the section line across to the area where my new void is. And so you can see there, that's the, the shape that it's cutting. So to find it, you need to find a surface that the void is created. So by clicking on that edge of the floor there, then I can go to Edit in Place, and now I can select that void again. And so I could also go and use Cut, and to choose the void, again, here I need to go to a surface that it's creating on that floor I selected previously, and then I can choose another floor. Just keep going like that. So that way you can cut out parts of your shapes, uh, your floors and your walls, um, using any solid form that you can model. And you can use that to do partial penetrations as well. So if you just need to cut a section out of a floor but not go all the way through, uh, you can use that method as well. Uh, and also to do uh, alcoves in walls and things like that, uh, you can use, use that approach for, uh, for all those things. So it's a really useful option. I'm not going to use that in my model, of course, because I want things as rectilinear as possible, just because I know from experience it makes things much easier if you can have rectilinear shapes. And often they can look just as good as uh, unusual sloping and curving geometry. So um, very quickly here, I'll just put in some, some voids and give you an idea how you can get some quick views set up that can be pretty effective. And I'll do another video on, uh, on graphics. Just very quickly here, put in some shafts in. So it's got the same settings as, as before, so I can just finish that and then I can actually copy shafts because I've got another one here that's exactly the same size. And without doing a lot of work, I can uh, put a railing to follow those. And, uh, and again, that can be copied. So don't forget, you do need to have, well, unless you can make a convincing case, you need to have this um, penetration to create an atrium through your, through your building. And uh, it, it can be a really effective design element. So if we have a view there now, you can see that's going to create a lot of interest through the building by having... penetration there. So even without the walls or anything, it's starting to look interesting. And so the final thing I'll say there, when you do your penetration, uh, again, this is probably the best way to do the columns initially with the um, columns on each level. <coughs> but what you'll find then, if you uh, go and bring the, uh, the columns together, so, actually, so it's these ones I need to... <coughs> Sorry. So I need to make the offset there zero so that the top of the column there will come up. You still need to use join then to get rid of that line, which is a bit tedious. So I wouldn't have a problem if you instead get rid of one level of columns in those areas where they're uh, connecting all the way through and um, and just extend the others up. It'll look a lot better. So this one actually will go even higher.
the engineers will hate you because they it'll mess up their calculations. But uh, well, that's their problem, and also you're not going to give this to an engineer anyway. So uh, yeah, just something to think about. So in charted though, you can see it's starting to get there. Um, so very last thing actually before I finish up, then I'll do another thing on uh, doing some other things with graphics after this. But uh, make sure when you're doing perspectives that you have the um, field of view extending all the way. So if you see that issue, I'm sure we've looked at this before, but I'll just remind you, if you show camera, you can see that, uh, that cone of vision and you can extend it all the way so that you can see everything you need to in the view. The view in the end won't probably extend that far, but uh, it's still good to be able to see everything so you know what's actually there. So, yeah, I think that the atrium should give you a lot of opportunities for interesting interior perspectives and rendering and things like that. Is that atrium has to go all the way to the It should, yeah, yeah, because you want light to come through, so that, that's kind of the point of it, uh, to let natural light into the, the inner parts of the building. So, uh, yeah, we'll look at the roof and other things later as well. So you've got your hallways running around? Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And then rooms. Yeah, so it's probably going to mess up your fire stairs uh, or your, your travel distances. So we just have to check those anyway. If you've got to go around those those void areas, it might be more 